Right now we are here at Sipo, Center of Excellence Prosthetic Orthotics in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, coming to have my test socket sorted out. Get ready for the new sockets, but these are not quite right. So there's another, probably another trip to go yet. So I'm gonna go take them to the office and have a meeting with the doctor, the prosthetist, to discuss what's coming next. And hopefully, new legs soon. We're at Center of Excellence Prosthetics and Orthotics. This is Bangkok, Thailand, um, limb fitting center, and uh, having my test sockets replaced, uh, repaired, and updated. Thank you. And um, once we get this done properly, hopefully you can get flying again. I'm waiting to see um, my prosthetist, just a review of the test socket. Um, I had test socket done a while ago, but the COVID situation made it impossible for him to come back. I, and so we've now come back just do some more alterations. This is the most important relationship a amputee ever has. It's more important than the wife, for real. I think while we wait for the prosthetist, we should go and have a look around and I'll introduce you to what being an amputee is like. Okay, make sure there's nobody in here. Okay, these are fitting rooms. I'll just show you quickly. Um, fitting rooms, very important, so important. The electric chair, if you're naughty. Basically, you sit here, you take, put your prosthetic, um, you make your prosthetic mold uh, for, your, for this here. When you sit there, they do it with um, plaster of Paris and um, uh, like a wrap, and then they take a casting of your leg. And once they've done the casting, which is really uh, intricate, it's a really tough process for the prosthetist. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is a very straightforward situation where they make your legs. You also have the, um, like your foot positions, you sometimes will be off balance and they need to adapt. So you have different thicknesses of sole to change, then they know how much to add or remove from a prosthetic leg. These are very important as well. Um, this is the prosthetist chair because he has to roll around on his backside when he's doing it. Uh, incredibly important as well. Um, and this is some uh, pre-war legs here. This is from um, the, the pirates. This is the pirate leg. They've been buried upside down. Uh, they obviously fell off trying to walk the plank, as you can see. Many have attempted and yet many have failed to walk the plank. All these pirates, bless them, all died a horrible death, drowned. And uh, maybe they were looking at how to make new legs. I don't know. Sad situation. Then you come to this situation. Like we've got such amazing like prosthetic legs and prosthetic parts. They're also really important. My goal is this. I want to do the, the long, long, long flight with one of these legs because it will make the takeoff and landing so much easier for me. Um, if you look at the, the way they're made, these are intricate, they're, they're very well designed. Um, I believe the max load on these is 300 kilos, or 300 pounds, it's a lot. Um, this heel here is, uh, basically gives you the balance. And these legs, if you look, they're almost identical to mine, just so you know. But this, we call it the camel toe, because uh, each position, when you go to left or right, it manages to keep your foot flat on the ground. Many amputees are, are um, above knee, but above knee is obviously from the hip to the knee. This, this position here is the above knee, so anything from the knee, sort of up, this is called through knee, so here, to here is above knee. And this is where the mechanics of being an amputee are really important. Um, so basically you have mechanical knees and you have many, many varieties of knee. Like the most expensive one here, I believe is about 1.3 million baht per, per, per limb. And each one, they got hydraulic, the hydraulic versions. Um, they've got electrical versions. I'm, I don't want to say the, say the right, one, right ones because I'm not above knee, um, but I believe the one at the back is, uh, the silver one is slightly electrical. The other thing that is really important with being an amputee is, is obviously the foot shell. 
the thing with a foot shower is it's not about being humanized. It's about fitting almost every type of shoe, trainer, um, sneaker, um, that you can even look flip flops too. My, my foot shell doesn't have the toe. My foot shell is a solid shell. It doesn't have any toes to it uh, as such. I mean, it has, has the outlay outlines, but it doesn't have the, the gap between the big toe. Um, so, you know, the shells, as I say, they're very important to give you the fitting into your trainers, your sneakers, whatever you call them. And these are different variations of a running blade. And these people think that they give you an advantage, which is absolute trush. It does not give you an advantage at all. You want to be an amputee and live this life, and then tell me you've got an advantage. They've got some really cool designs. Um, like, I mean, who wouldn't want to look like that? Oh, it's just so cool. But they're also incredibly light. And um, you can weigh up being an amputee with, with the lightness and, and the, um, like the thickness. If you have a light spring, you've still got to control your thigh. When you, when you bounce off of your, of your leg and you're running through the thing, your thigh will, will try to push one way or the other way. So that, that initial reaction here, it's all relative. So if you've got a spring, how is that going to help you run? I mean, it's not. It's not like that. It's a, it's a massive shock absorber. And it gives you the, the ability to bounce off of, your, off of your leg a bit more. And that's basically what a really good prosthetic, prosthetic leg is. It is a shock absorber. It's, it's, a, it's what your ankle, ankle should do. Your ankle is a shock absorber and a motion sensor. Whatever you do with your knee, you have to do the same thing with a prosthetic. When we get to this system, this is uh, like the sockets and skin color. If you, if you want to try and blend into your original tones, they allow you to do that with um, certain um, like patterns and everything. I mean, so, there's so many really cool, look, like this one here, it's just cool. It's, this guy had a short stump. Um, this is actually a guy, I don't want to say too much, I know the story of this guy, um, but he's got hydraulics here. Um, but he had a short stump. A short stump can be quite painful. I'm glad I don't have the short stump. When you come to a room like this, you know that you're in the, the final stages of getting your legs. Um, we have the parallel bars, which is important for every amputee. It doesn't matter how many years you've been an amputee, if you sprint, jog, walk, run, these bars are your lifesaver because when you do your checks, you gotta hold on to something. And they do the basic walk, like a catwalk model weed, literally hold one after another, checking. And what they do, the prosthetist will sit at the end, he'll be watching your hips, watching your knees, watching the foot position, and they make the adaptations. So every step you take is constant. They're watching every part of the motion. And without these, they can't adapt, they can't take your leg off, they can't change your position, you can't just stand here. It's so important. And at the same time, you have a mirror. The mirror is your goal, because you look in the mirror and see if you walk naturally, you look naturally, if you're off angles. So, very, very important way of life. So this, when you check your body, you know. And then you have over here, this is your foot plate sensor. So you literally would take a run up. So you'd start maybe here with the, the whole goal is to walk on this platform. As you walk, you hit the sensor, you'd roll over your leg and have a computer here. And it will tell you where the leg is overbalanced, underbalanced, if you're natural walk, not natural walk. Um, you know, the, these things are so important to an amputee, a good amputee and a good prosthetist, a prosthetist can do everything. That one roll over, if your body's wrong, the position's wrong, the pain is excruciating. So get it right the first time. Then you don't gotta come back, lose days off work, lose time, lose money. Get it right the first time. Very important, most important place. Okay, we then go into another part of the uh, prosthetist world and the uh, limb fitting world is through this door, the magical world of Narnia. I'll show you what this place is about. So this room here is the research development room where they research different things and uh, obviously develop different things. Um, it's also the gym. When somebody becomes an amputee, they're not sure of how they're gonna do stuff, right? One of the most basic 
piece of equipment, a treadmill. But without the balance, you need something to help you. No gym does this, right? You don't got to go to a gym. You can't go to a gym because you've not got a harness to hold you up. You don't know how to walk. You're scared to walk. These will always be a, a savior. And it's like what I said in my car, you know, there's always a way. There's always something you can do. There's always a way you can do something. No excuses. There's ways to walk when you've got prosthetic legs. There's ways to run. Um, the lady in the corner, she's a fan of mine. I've just, she keeps following me everywhere I go, so we'll ignore her today. Just stay away, please. Um, actually, I genuinely don't know what's behind here because I haven't looked. I do believe it's the laser room. Yeah. So you have your laser room um, for alignments and stuff. All pretty cool. Pretty impressive stuff here. All this costs money. You know, and look once again back to the parallel bars. Once you've done the test and they've tried something out, you've got to go back to the drawing board. These prosthetic places, that are the, the top, top notch ones, allow you to be human. They allow you to be what you should be. They allow you to live life. They want you to live life. They don't want you to be a nobody. They want you to be a somebody. So coming to a prosthetist that is willing to help you develop your life, it's, it's just worth taking that toll on you. It costs you money, but it's so worth it. It will allow you to give, you, give yourself a new life and a new lease of life as well. And without that new lease of life, you're not going to be anybody. You need to fight for yourself. By coming to a place like this, you can. But this, this poor amputee here um, was in some sort of accident and um, bless her, she, she got an amputation here too. But apparently uh, there is a cure. Uh, they're researching this room. I think it's... Um, it will help her one day. Maybe a skull cap or something will help her. Um, I would shake her hand today, but I can't because she's not wearing it. Um, and uh, her pelvic area is, is, is really cool. Uh, he's going to break stuff. Um, but at least she's still smiling. You know, even with all this, look, this, she loves this place so much, she's still smiling. Bless her. And that, that, that proves to you that life, life keeps on going. Although... I think that her, um, her fetish of being wrapped in plastic is not appropriate for here. And then we have our final room, which I'll take you to, which is where the magic happens, the workshop. This is the magical zone. This is where it all happens. These guys are the lifeblood of an amputee's life. You need to know these guys too. You need to trust them with your life. If these guys don't do the job properly, you have not got a life. This is like a huge chain. Every finger, when you overlap them, doesn't work. Keep them together. Prosthetist, receptionist, the workshop, they're all so important. Without these guys, the chain isn't complete. You cannot have a cycle. We need everybody and you'll see. Let's go have a look what they've got. This is basically where the magic comes from. Um, if you look, in, they've got the knees. Looks like some second-hand parts here. Yeah. So we've got actually, they do do second-hand stuff. Like I was explaining in the car, it's important about the socket, but if the parts are working, you can still use them. This here would go into here, like this. These are the protection for your leg. These are molded in, into your um, carbon fiber. And you see the, the, the width here? It shows you it's about four or five mil, five mil of pure carbon. We will hold this thing together. And that creates, this is your knee lock. So it gives you a good idea what these do. Okay, well, if you look at this, this is basically my leg. It's a smaller version here. The foot's smaller. Um, it's called a flex foot. It's written on here. So basically, it allows the foot to flex in many directions. The toe, toe flexes gives you lateral movement. The heel is your balance. And if you look, it's almost like for like, you see? It's almost an identical leg. It's just a smaller version. And the person that was an amputee here was um, going on this, I'd say, as a lady. Um, the length of the leg means she had a very small stump, about this length. And uh, they're very, very good, strong legs. If you was to put these together, you'd have basically the leg, then you'd have the part that goes in here, and this would then connect to, to, the, to this. So it'd be like that. And then you have your socket. Very, very important. 
really good parts, strong, reliable parts. And if you look carefully, I mean, there's, just checking, there's no names on here, so I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But these are all damaged ones as well. If I put this out of the way, this is a running blade. So that, that's like a running blade here. The position, you see, will be on the toe. And the amount of flex you get will allow you to do a lot more. And you got ones, this is what happens. See, these are old. Um, this originally had a, what you call a foam foot shell, but it's in actually usable condition. This, if it was cleaned up, would still work. It would still be a very good leg, but it looks awful. It's got nothing to do with it though. It's just the design, the amount of glue that made it look like this, because it's a foam foot. The same situation, it's got a nice, toe, not very um, sporty. For somebody like me, I couldn't use this at all, but a very basic amputee, a, a new amputee, could have a very good life with a foot looking like this. Okay, we're going to pretty much the final stage of any building, okay? These titanium poles, or aluminium poles, depending on where you're getting them from. Steel. Carbon. All different designs but all have a different use. The, the key thing with, with these, I mean, you can feel the weight difference. There's, if I was just to, like, you can see which one bounces low compared to the other one. You know, it's the exact same length, but one bounces lower, which means this one's really heavy and this one's nice and light. These degrade really fast. If you go to the beach, they're not very good. These ones rust, not very good. Carbon, not bad. They're making, what I like about here is they're willing to, um, what's the word, recycle. You, can, you have some amazing legs that people just outgrow, but they're able to recycle them to make them usable for somebody else, which also keeps the cost down. So you can't always come up with this silly line that it's too expensive to get good legs. Um, in an ideal world for everyone out there, the best of the best, the best wheelchair, the best leg, the best trainers, the best shirt, the best tie, the best, the best, the best. You can always get the best, even second hand. Just because the word second hand doesn't always mean that it's the worst. It just means that somebody's outgrown that, that situation. If you was to be honest, you'd say titanium, but it costs more money. You'd say carbon fiber, because it costs more money. However, if you don't use the good components, it's gonna cost you twice as much because you're gonna replace them. You can always um, buy the worst. You can always buy the lowest to the cheapest brands. You can always do that. It's never, no one's gonna judge you for what you choose to do. However, it financially in the long run makes more sense to go with the, with the better quality based on the fact you're not gonna replace the parts. The worst thing that can happen with carbon fiber is it, it delaminates. Um, I've been trying to find you a leg. I wanted to show you what a delamination does. I, one of my legs on my other set had done that. Um, no. Delamination basically occurs because you ride your toes. Um, yeah, these are all okay, unfortunately, because they're using them again, so they, you won't find a delaminated one. Delamination is where you maybe get a stone in your foot shell or um, sand in your foot shell soil in your foot shell. Um, and as you continue to walk, you're making abrasive actions on the foot. By doing that, and this is where prosthetic cleanliness is really important, um, it will give you a longer life. You, you're rubbing away the lamination on the, on the carbon fiber, which also takes away the layers of carbon fiber as well. Eventually you end up with millimeter thick carbon and you take one step and you hear it go and it's a horrible sound because you know it's going to cost you money. The most important thing with your leg is keep it clean. Um, we get very complacent as we get on with our um, prosthetic lives. It, you know, we start to not think so much about the cleanliness because we just don't care anymore. We do it all the time. But after a heavy rain, after going to the beach, after going out in the sand, anything like that, just you can hose your foot shell out and it will help you a lot. It will make a big difference. 
it will give you another, another year's worth of life in your prosthetic just because you cleaned it one time. It's amazing. Such basic actions can give you so much more life. Thermoplastic room. Okay, this is another place of magic. Um, we have, if you want pizza, hot dogs, french fries, you can go in that one. Um, basically, here is where they make your, your socket. So if you look at this, this is a socket lining. Inside, that would be um, somebody's mold of their, of their foot, of their leg, their real leg. And this is how they create the, the mold around the socket. There's something here that I do like. Um, we have the option of customizing these sockets. See, I like mine just to look as normal as it can be. I mean, it's black. I like that. But you can actually have a wrap. They put these wraps inside of the carbon fiber, and it's like your final um, layer. And then you can have um, your carbon, carbon socket with nice pattern on it and um, gives you the cool look. And can you imagine you're a tiny little child in the world of amputation, a little girl, little boy that loves Spider-Man, Superman, My Little Pony, princesses, you know. How cool is it that a little baby, a little child can still feel human and feel normal and also accept that they're an amputee because of the socket design? I mean, that was that special. Um, some places won't do that for you, but when you have something like this, I mean, it can, it can touch your heartstrings when you see a little, little child with no leg, no arm, and they've got this really cool socket, you know that they can accept their life. And in uh, other places, you know, it's just brilliant. I mean, I love it. I think it's so, so important to be human and to show the, the love of being able to accept. It's important. Trust me, it's important. And uh, I think here, I was going to see if it's doing there are some like, different molds for different uh, amputations as well, so pretty cool. Okay, well, when, you, when I explain to you about the, the, this whole lifestyle, it all comes down to comfort, uh, normality, and being the same as your leg. You want to be one with the leg. Um, all the magic happens on these tables. It's how they design, how they develop, how they adapt. Um, this is just like an outline of a socket, like I said. Um, going on the size of this, I would say this is an above knee, above knee, so it'd be around here, because it's rather wide, it wouldn't be a knee. So this is for a high, high, high knee, a high leg. Um, but, I mean look, everything here tells a story. Every piece of rubbish, every piece of plaster is telling the story of one disabled man or one disabled woman, or one disabled child. Each thing here is telling the story, and they're expressing that story with a brand new leg. Well, this is where um, Luke Skywalker had his um, lightsaber made. Um, his father wasn't too happy about that, and they had a fight, apparently, and he lost his hand, had his hand made over there. Um, this is where you get these foam. These are like uh, your foam for your leg, if you want to look normal. Um, somebody who cannot take it, maybe is the right word to use, or just wants to be able to wear a dress when they go out, uh, or just doesn't want to look like got poles for legs, would have these um, made into um, basically a, a styrene um, leg cover. And that just allows them to look normal. Um, to me, it, it my life, I don't look normal, I can't change it, I'm not normal. Nothing about me is normal, so I'm happy like this, but there are people that can't take it, and I totally agree with them, you know, do what makes you feel comfortable. Don't, don't ever be embarrassed about what you are though. Okay, so today I've arrived at SIPO to um, have my legs checked again, and adjusted as, as needed, and uh, obviously to meet Bengt, my prosthetist, who's sitting with me now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm the founder of, of this clinic, which is called Center of Excellence for Prosthetics and Orthotics. And we did this clinic just like any other clinics in Scandinavia, and that's what it looked like. And we built this uh, three years ago. 
And the, the idea with this clinic is to mix, to mix education with clinical work. <clears throat> so we have a, there is a clinic downstairs, which is a government clinic, and then there's students around here, so we have 140 students from six different countries. And uh, so we teach, but we do a lot of clinical work. Yeah, so, so um, the unique part here is that Mahidol University and the school, St. Ron Center of of prosthetics and orthotics and Scandinavian Orthopedic Laboratory have come together and joined their forces. And we collaborate, we collaborate around this center and, and uh, got it started. And that, as I said, three years ago. And we met one year ago. One year ago. Yeah. And yeah, I've been here now, what, I think been coming here now for a year and a half, nearly two years, with Teddy was the first guy. Yeah. And he moved back down to Phuket and I met you yeah, and so you've been have, having nightmares ever since, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, we, so we have two foreigners. It's, it's uh, Teddy Fogelstrom, who is an orthopedic spine surgeon, and it's myself, Ben, who is a certified prosthetist orthotist from Sweden. I've been working good. in many different countries, but it's super nice to work here in Thailand, and it feels very meaningful to do it. And um, it's going quite well. More and more people find us, but still it's difficult to tell people that we are actually here and can, can help out. We try uh, not to have too many people because what we want to do is to give a really service. quick service so you don't have to wait. Like I just had one here now, uh, one person who lost uh, his leg and there we start today and then he will try the leg tomorrow and then he will start to walk on that the next day and have it and, and it's a process of learning to walk, learning to get used to it. So we want to have a very efficient service and then we cannot have too many people. The panorama of amputation in Thailand is a little bit different to what it is in Europe. For trauma accidents we recognize that it's about 30 percent of trauma and that's made predominantly because of road accidents and accidents related to work. Then we have a big group, which is exactly the same as in Europe with vascular problems, diabetic uh, patients and so forth. So that's about the same. But we have a bit more trauma, which means that people live with their amputation many, many more years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so this is what we want to eliminate, eliminate and get rid of. Sorry, that's but nice, embarrassing. But for me. apart from that, it's 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 looking good. Okay, you can put that back on again. The right one, um, it just isn't quite right. Left one actually is really nice, but um, on the top, the right one, I'm getting a little bit too much play. Okay, I did send a message to Teddy, but I didn't know if he was in the, but he wasn't. Right. When so. Basically, we did this one as a trial, and this is a trial leg before we get on to make permanent legs. And we put it up on Gareth's old feet, which is the same feet as on, on this one. And there are different ways of suspension, how to keep the leg on. And this is a distal pin, which there are some advantages and some disadvantages with. One disadvantage is that you get this play, so you get a little bit of movement inside the, the leg. Um, the advantage is that it's very quick to put on and, and easy to, to, to handle. The other way which, which is the way which we do mostly is a vacuum socket. And a vacuum socket is, the suspension is a bit better. So let's see what we have here now. Okay, could you put that on? And now we can hear the clicking sound. So, what's that, it's all in. Yeah, so this one is, 
So the right one, yeah, that's pretty. You just bend your knee. Okay, is it not too high here? Or? No, it's okay. Is it? Yes, yeah, okay. To me, it feels high. So if you bend your leg, okay. That's right. Right. Are you sure that's okay? To be honest, I, I'm so used to having a bad fit, remember, from before that... Yeah, I think that's too high, take it so off. we're going to take that off. We did yeah. actually take off originally, we took off yeah, some before. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to lower it a little bit. Would you mind take that off as well? We'll have a look at that. So this leg it's is... going to be smelly too. Yeah. But... <clears throat> and here, we have a little bit less of this. And we have, but otherwise the skin is really mobile, so it's, it's nice. So that's good, okay. And at the back, have you got? No, this one. Leather. That's okay. Huh? Yeah. But I'm, I'm getting um, here all the time. I don't think, I actually believe it could be a toenail, like a fake. Yeah, no. I don't know what it is. It, no, keeps, it goes hard and then um, okay. it creates a, like a. No, this is the end of this bone. There we yeah, have the femur. This, I mean the skin though. The skin yeah. on the outside, it goes. But it's really, it's really. The, it's the end of tibia, of fibula, which means that you have a high pressure here. Okay, just that. So we need to relieve the high pressure. But I think we get that from this one. Why is the red mark at the end of the stump? Yeah, we have this edema here. Yeah, yeah and that's why with the with the liner. Mm. Actually, that's blood. Yeah. <laughs> the, Bleed a lot. Bleed where from where? From from the stump. You can see that. Yeah, I bleed all the time. So, so it gets yeah, incredibly and painful. And you see that that's that's really what you get with the pin suspension. So that's why we want to avoid a pin suspension and have a vacuum suspension instead. But with the flying. Yeah, and my doctor also said that um, my stump fluctuates way too much. Yeah. After after three hours, the half this size it basically just it is yeah mm, it's yeah. tiny yeah that's why i tried to leave this on since 5 a.m to try and get some more light so you can see the um yes. as i walk in the like as i walk with these yes what happens is to here i can actually put my hand down yes yes to place back on yeah please and so um, to be honest i can't remember why did we do another vacuum socket because you said you don't want anything else huh? Yeah, we because talk, we uh, talked about the vacuum. We talked about it before. And you said you don't want it. No, and but you still don't want it, huh? <laughs> I'm worried about my flying. I, I need to foot launch, and the vacuum socket. Any air gets in that bag's gonna fall off. But you have these legs. Yeah, but if one of these breaks, and I'm flying, I can still land. With um, my backup legs, I want to be able to rotate my legs around, so I can wear them evenly. There's also more components I have to buy, buy as well, isn't it? You know, money's right tight. Mm, no, it's less. It's the same. No, no, I still have to buy new socks. I still have to buy new liners. And... Yeah, if you... So when you wear these ones... Yep. Can I push it in? Do you bleed as well? Um, no, not like these. Not like that? No, no because this is a little bit more space. I think it gives you a little bit more pressure at the distal end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. I don't need to go through it, do I? Okay, we've already done this. I'll walk here. Yeah, wherever. There's that click. <laughs> Made me scared to wear them. No, that's you just came into it. Okay. Again? Yeah. Yeah, you walk very good. Well done. Missed it. I didn't. Okay. You just bend your leg. Okay, that's fine now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we adjust that. Did you say that this is it, 
this has become very big? Um, no, this one's the one that I'm, I feel like I'm getting too much play. Okay. Just, it just doesn't feel, um, this one I say pretty much okay. It just, yeah, it's nothing really too bad. This one, it doesn't, it doesn't feel quite. It's like, stable? Like, okay. I see I can move yeah, quite a lot. So you feel like, yeah. I can actually feel that the bottom, the side, the top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I actually wriggle, this one I can't really wriggle too much. Yeah. But this one, I actually mm. turn my sump inside it. So yeah. if I'm going to fly, it'd be a bit of a worry when I come into land. Mm -hmm. So. And what does that tell us? It tells us that the foot is moving quite nicely. You have a, quite a nice heel action and you also have a, 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 like a terminal stance so the foot give energy back. If it didn't give any, any energy back, it would just go down here. So the foot is working. The gait is very good. He walked very nicely. Um, so I think we can be quite happy with that. What we see, we can confirm here. Do you stand up again? Yeah. Well, I lean so, forward a bit. Yeah. yeah. It just, so I did, for me, it doesn't feel tight enough. Yeah. No, that, that's right. So, so if you have another sock, would, yeah. would that tighten it up enough for you, or more than no, one sock? No, I think it needs more. It just more. doesn't feel. because yeah. sock is still soft. There's still no major pressure. Yeah. And 22 years, it's important that I can feel that. Yeah. Especially, I like to have a feeling here. When because compared to the old legs. Yeah. How many years have you had these legs on? The, this socket is five years. Five years. Yeah, it's mm. a five year socket. Mm. Okay. And the ones that we took off originally were eight years from this. Okay. And they, I told you from day one, I hated the leg, but they'd already signed them to me. To be honest, you could even go one more. You could do, yeah. Yeah, yeah could easily go one more. Yeah. Because now I can just start to feel it here. Yeah. And that, that's like that. Yeah. That feels better. If I feel some tension, because as the day goes on, that, that will go to zero. Yes. And um, I'll still be moving around a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, but definitely a lot better. You can just walk on it. Oh, shit, there you go. Good. There's the brake. Told you I could hear it cracking. Yeah. Don't know where that broke from. I better yeah, go between. Hold on, to, hold, yeah. on hold on. That's snap. That's... That didn't sound good. I'll go between just here. Walk, just walk it. Yeah, I'm going to. Too. That feels weird now. I can't walk on it. There's something that is, is, that's weird. It's, I can't, it, the movement now is in my knee, I don't want to take it. You sit down again? How weird. I, I, Which leg was it? This one, this one. Then. Huh. Yeah, look. It's here. Snapped. Well, that's good, because then we... Go over the front, go over the top. There you go. Yeah, and that's it. So this is a tri-leg. Good job. Yeah. I told you I could hear it cracking and I was scared to use it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Perfect timing. Perfect timing, yeah. So, um, that means I'm fat. That means that, um, <laughs> right, okay. Because then we keep these legs. Yeah, and, and you go to fix it and, and come back. And we go on to, to do another one. So, we need to think about that. We're not going to, I mean, the, the flying is, is super important, but, but for, it's like shoes. You use shoes for different occasions. So you can have a flying leg and you can have legs which you use every day when you work because you're on your feet all day, I'll try all it night. Then. You try it then, we'll give it a go. So, yeah. So we're gonna look into that, okay? okay? And in the meantime, we're going to do something about this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, so we're back. actually done for today. Eh? Yeah, I guess nothing else we can do. No. Nope. So uh, um, send me a next appointment when I'll come. Yeah.
Well, that's the end of today. Uh, I'll come back again because my um, socket snapped during the exercises to see if I was able to do any repairs. Well, yeah, a whole damn socket snapped. So that's the end of my day at SIPO and I have to come back again. And um, I guess we'll try some more tricks and see what happens. And apparently now we're going for a brand new type of socket because I'm too active for this type of leg. So that's kind of, um, that's annoying actually, because it's going to be a bit more, more money. But you know what they say? You only get the best when you work for it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home, relax, go fly my paramotor. Uh, probably go fly at the beach today and end of SIPO.